here in the heartland. This is the working man. These are the fields of dreams of America. No, you can't take that away. Cause I want to stay here in the heartland. The Oneota culture lived several hundred years here in Iowa, and around 1650 they split into four different tribes, with one of those being the Iowa. A signature item of the Oneota culture was the use of crushed clam shells mussels within their pottery. And because of this, archaeologists are able to track the location of the Iowa throughout Iowa by finding these artifacts as far as northwest Iowa Blood Run to northeast Iowa at the Effigy Mounds. Now the Iowa were a relatively small tribe, numbering between 1,500 and 2,000 but they controlled a rather large area. The territory that they had control of went from the Missouri River to the Mississippi River, as far north as Pipestone, Minnesota, and down to St. Louis, Missouri. Now, one of the things that they controlled within this region was catlinite, and catlinite was a resource that was used to make ceremonial pipes. Sharing this valuable resource with other tribes helped them maintain control over Iowa and Northern Missouri. The Iowa would live for nearly 200 years across our state. They would see the French, Spanish, English, and American trade influencing their tribe throughout this time. As westward expansion pushed the Mississippi River and beyond, tribal conflicts would increase and soon treaties would be signed with the American government. In 1830, White Cloud, Mahaska, and Great Walker traveled to Washington, D.C., where they saw a technology and industry that was growing out east, and as a result of this meeting, they would sign a treaty that ceded the first part of their land to the U.S. government. And with President Andrew Jackson signing the Indian Removal Act of 1830, the Iowa were soon displaced to Kansas and then on to Oklahoma. And by 1838, the Iowa were no longer within their traditional land. And in 1846, Iowa became a state, with our name deriving from the Iowa. Now, the frontier myth of the definition of Iowa is beautiful land. But the real definition of the Iowa is those who separate it. As a reminder to all our visitors, all Iowa students have free admission to the Iowa Hall of Pride thanks to Musco Lighting. I am a native Iowan. Uh, I actually was born in Davenport, Iowa, and uh, grew up in DeWitt for 10 years of my life till I was 10 years old, and then did my middle school and high school in Bettendorf and went to college there. I had a great group of friends that I hung out with, and um, it, was a, it was an awesome place to grow up. I couldn't have asked for anything better. So when I was 16 years old, uh, it was September, I was two weeks into my sophomore year of high school. Uh, my buddies called me and really wanted to go um, down to the, along the river, there was um, some huge lime piles down there that we used to all go bike on and, and hang out. And a, a train had come by and, and for a couple months we had been jumping trains for fun and uh, riding them for a little while and jump back off of them and jump on and jump off. And um, I just missed on one. I was going, I ran alongside of it and uh, grabbed the ladder and it ripped me off my feet so hard I instinctually just let go of the ladder and uh, rolled what I thought was away from the train. And uh, I heard uh, the train engineer yelling at me um, and I uh, wasn't sure what was going on, but uh, jumped up to try to run because I thought I was in trouble and uh, fell back down to the ground and um, didn't know what was going on still. And I jumped back up again on my feet and uh, fell back down again and I uh, didn't know, understand. I looked down and my, my right leg was completely gone. Um, it was about 20 yards away from me. It had flown off and, and flew down the tracks and my left leg was just hanging on by my sweatpants. So it, it ran over my right knee and my left ankle. It was just like an episode of ER really um, from there where um, paramedics showed up. They had to split the train in half because I was in between the river and the tracks. And uh, there were just lots of guys working on me and um, it was really crazy. They airlifted me to Iowa City after I got to the hospital. And uh, I remember the whole thing. I was conscious during the entire thing. And uh, I was, I'd severed my femoral artery, so blood was pumping out really fast. And they were just trying to get blood in me as fast as they could um, because it was just pumping out so fast. So um, that was, I, I didn't realize my life was in danger at the time, but um, obviously with your femoral arter artery severed, they, um, you can bleed out pretty fast. So I was pretty lucky that I lived. When I first got into sled hockey, there was um, the there there was a couple different organizations really trying to take hold of the of the Paralympic sled hockey team. So U.S. Paralympics controlled it, and um, it was really incredible to get into their uh, program to be able to go to the Olympic Training Center and train there for for the first time was is just incredible being around the the different athletes at the training center. 
it definitely made me want to, to just continue to grow and, and to work harder to, to really um, represent the United States and, and to try to bring home a gold medal for, for the U.S. Probably uh, Vancouver was, was the first year we won gold. Um, it was in North America. I had like 40 of my friends and family there watching and uh, our team went undefeated. We outscored our opponents 19 to nothing and uh, just destroyed everybody and, and uh, walked away with our first gold medal. And it, it was just in, it, totally incredible. Watch your flag being raised and, and they're singing the national anthem and you, your whole team's together. It's, it's a overwhelming experience to say the least. And they put that gold medal around your neck. It's pretty special. Is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. Iowa? In this particular case, Dyersville, Iowa. Located in eastern Iowa on Highway 20 and 136, Dyersville is a growing community of 4,200 residents with numerous sights to see. If you build it, they will come. People will come, Ray. They'll come to Iowa for reasons they can't even fathom. And that is what people have been doing at the Field of Dreams since the movie was released in 1989. Walk out of the corn, have a catch, or taking a pickup game of baseball at the Field of Dreams. Hey, Dad? You wanna have a catch? I'd like that. The National Farm Toy Museum is where ag history is on a roll. You'll discover how farming has evolved in the history of tractors ranging from the 1920 John Deere Waterloo Boy, the Lindemann Crawler, 1941 Farmall B Cultivision, the International 1086, to thousands of other tractors and detailed farm scenes, you will explore agricultural history. With construction starting in September of 1887, over the next two years, the Basilica of St. Francis Xavier would come to life. The Catholic Church bestows this title of Basilica on churches of unusual architecture and spiritual significance. Pope Pius XII declared St. Francis Xavier a minor basilica on May 11, 1956. There are only 77 basilicas in the United States, and St. Francis Xavier is unique in that it is one of only three that are located in rural area, with all the other basilicas being located in metropolitan areas. Experience Iowa and discover pride throughout our state.